So joining us tonight, we have the Senior Vice President of FFL Enhanced Foundation, Mr. Gage Peart. Uh, he is consistently a $30,000 a month producer, while also growing an agency to over $400,000 of paid commissions per month. And he's gonna be sharing with us tonight how he's able to balance both. And that way we can take, get a lot of takeaways from him. So Gage, man, uh, happy Sunday. How you feeling, man? I'm doing great. And uh, I appreciate you having me on here. Um, you know, always have looked up to you since joining the business and seeing where you guys are at. It's just an honor to be a part of you guys' call. And I'm doing great, man. I can't complain. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. We are, we're super, oh, somehow the pin went away. Summer, if you can go ahead and get the pins, I'm gonna let you do your thing. Awesome, appreciate that. Thank you. So, um, yeah, man, I mean, I, I've seen your growth over the last, it's been almost two years now, right? It'll be two years this month? Yeah. Uh, two years in August. Two years in August. Okay, so two years in August with Family First Life. And you, you're very public, right? You're very public in the Facebook group. You're very public in Slack. You're very open with your journey, which people, I know I appreciate the transparency and a lot of people do. For anyone who may not know your story or may not know your journey of Family First Life, can you just kind of quickly share how you got introduced to FFL, if you were just born into the insurance world, or if it was something you had to kind of learn, kind of explain to us a little bit about your background and how you got to this point today. Yeah, man. I mean, truly, I, I had no knowledge about life insurance at all. Um, my family never really educated me on it. So definitely had no insurance knowledge or sales experience prior to coming to Family First Life. But um, you know, I was introduced to the opportunity through a friend and, uh, you know, I didn't, I personally didn't think I could do it. It was funny. You know, I heard it the first time and I was like, there's not a chance in H-E-L-L hockey sticks that I could do that. So, um, to uh, see where we've gone here, it's kind of crazy, but it's also just a testament to the opportunity. And, um, I just say that I'm a product of the system. I'm nothing special. Um, definitely people who are way better than me and I'd be the first one to admit it. Um, but just consistent work um, has really got us to this point. Um, but it was a struggle, man. Um, there's a lot of times where um, never seen this happening. Um, and when you first are getting the business, you're just trying to figure out if you can do this yourself. So, you know, to say in two years, you know, where we've gone and the experiences that we've we went through it's it's a true testament to what can happen here and you can mm -hmm. do it much faster than i did it you can learn from the different mistakes that i made so you can speed up your process as well um, because i definitely don't got it all figured out um, but what i've learned is just <clears throat> listening to um everybody and people who are growing and just staying a student of the game um i think has really played the biggest role into the growth and what we've accomplished here thus far. And so um, I hope that kind of, it doesn't need to go too deep into the background, but had zero sales experience, started in August of 2019, um, had no, no really money starting up, had about $2,000 to my name coming over here. And that was basically one month's worth of um, bills. And so I just went all in and I burned the ships and just, you know, had no plan B and uh, it, it's been a journey to say the least. Let's talk a little bit about what gave you the confidence day one to go out and start getting results right away. Cause you mentioned that you, you've been a student to the game and I think you are the perfect testament of how it doesn't matter what your background is. If you're coachable and you're willing to learn, you are the perfect like epitome of that over the last two years. And so what were some things that you did? What were some like, I mean, I remember you talked about the gym, you sacrificed your music, your podcast. So talk to us about how when people say, oh, well, I need to learn this. I don't have time for this. I don't know how to do this. Like you didn't either, but you made the time and you figured it out. What were some things you did that a newer agent can learn from that you did in the beginning as well? I mean, I, I just, I just wasn't confused that I knew nothing. And so I had to emerge into everything that was being put out and now it's it's better than ever. I mean, comparatively to when I started to now as a new agent for most of you guys who are on here, like there's so many resources out there for you to teach yourself and to be self-educated. And 
I mean, what I personally did is I just, you know, sacrificed, you know, different things I enjoyed. You know, I was really, I'm a really big sports fan. I love sports, but, um, you know, I quit watching ESPN. I quit watching Sports Center. I quit following my favorite teams. And of course, it, it initially it sucks, but at the same time, to know what I know now, I mean, I don't regret it at all. I mean, the other, when we had the Dallas conference, man, uh, back in April, it was the night of the NFL draft. And I was like, holy crap, it's the NFL draft. Like that's so much how out the loop of sports that I just sacrificed. Like, I don't care about it at all. And then uh, along with music, I mean, what I really did is <clears throat> when I was new, I sucked on the phones. And so I knew what I lacked in skill, I could make up an activity so I went out and was, were door knocking people. I mean, I would leave the house at eight, nine in the morning and not come back till eight, nine at night, no matter if I had three appointments on the books, because I had leads that I could resolve. And I knew I needed to, to improve my communication skills because getting hung up on in 10 seconds, 20 seconds wasn't getting me better or allowing me to practice. So I would go out to people's houses and interact with them and get three, four or five minutes of conversation back and forth, overcoming objections at the door. So then I could get stronger on the phones instead of making up excuses and saying, I only have three appointments and go to my three appointments and calling it a day. I want to come back home. And I would drive all over DFW, man, just trying to resolve all my leads. And back then we didn't have internet leads. Back then we didn't have as much variety of leads that we have now. We basically had old direct mail, direct mail or Facebook leads. And most of us coming into this business only could get our hands on the Facebook leads. So I was putting in game time orders two to three times a week just to get my lead flow up. And I was never confused that the leads is what was going to allow me to be successful here. I wasn't trying to squeeze the leads. I was trying to get as many leads as I possibly can. I'd make two, three sales, put in another order, get another order of 20, and just was consistent with that, man. And um, it was a challenge, you know, mentally challenges is I think is the biggest thing that we need to give those expectations to new agents is like, look, this is very simple, but it's going to be more mentally challenging than anything you've ever done in your life because you've most likely not really been down the self-employment road. And so you have to realize you're going to be the employee and the employer at the same time. And that it's very easy to slack off, but with self-discipline and consistency, man, I think that anybody can truly be successful here. And with the resources now, man, it's, it's, it's unbelievable, but I, I gave up things and I was, I just continued to be a student. And even when I didn't get the results, I still showed up. And that's one thing that I really contest to not giving up in the beginning is I kept showing up. I, I got on the Monday call. I got on the Trey Honeycutt call. The Trey Honeycutt call just kept my mind in the right place. And then Grady's uh, agency call. And then the corporate training on Friday. And then Sean Mike's leadership call. So it was like I was getting five days worth of, of business acumen. Um, business um, advice and word tracks for me to apply. And so I would apply those into the business. And it's, it's not just checking the box, man. It's like really taking what you hear and applying it in the home and getting uncomfortable. It, it's so interesting. You talked about being plugged in five days a week because every single day we're faced with choices, right? And you could have the choice to memorize the lyrics to the new Cardi B song, or you could have the choice to listen to the Steve Giordano inside the sale podcast and memorize his in-home opening word for word, right? You have the choice and those, those word tracks, the, the calls, the business acumen, like you said, they're everywhere. It's literally, if you're plugged into FFL, you can't miss it. In the Facebook group, the calls are posted every single day. In the Slack, the calls are posted every single day. Turn on your notifications. Like if you really want it, it's right there for you for the taking, but people make excuses. Um, people make excuses instead. So what were some of the top like two to four trainings or podcasts that you listened to as a new agent that kind of helped mold who you are today? I know someone in the comments was wondering, so what are two to four trainings or podcasts people can write down right now and go look up and get better? Yeah, I think Paul McLean's eight steps to find like Spence is what I had on repeat. 
And then obviously Grady's in-home um, presentation that he has on everfellamerica.com. But I think what the, be the best videos that you're gonna enjoy are the people you resonate with the most. So I think a great question you need to ask yourself is who is it that you really resonate with? Who is it that you like their style? And then you go to YouTube and you type in their name and there's gonna be a plethora of different trainings for that person, whether it's Paul McClain, whether it's Grady Paulson, whether it's Matt Smith, whether it's Jonathan Porcina, whether it's Brian Mendenhall, there's all these different people, Mark Mead. Find who you think you want to emulate your business most to the most and just dive into all their stuff. Listen to the live uh, dials, listen to their in-home presentation, listen to whatever content they got out there and find the person that you really look up to or aspiring to be because they got plenty of videos out there. You just got to find the person you like and the one you resonate with the most. I love it. I did the same thing for me. It was Grady and Paul. Those are my top two, Paul McLean and Grady Polson. And you just go to YouTube, search Paul McLean FFL, enter. Grady Polson FFL, enter, right? FFL USA, enter on YouTube. And you could have enough videos to last you the next three weeks, right? If you're watching videos 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So the content's there. Find someone you like and, and, and latch on and learn from them. So, hey, guys, if you want to learn about how Gage coaches – lead strategy for new agents as well as his own lead strategy drop a leads in the comments below because leads is super important and it's one of those things um where people say oh well i have to dial and it's like no you get to dial you get to dial leads like how fortunate and blessed are we that we have the ability to pick up the phone and call people that whether it was five seconds ago five months ago or five years ago requested leads in order uh, requested insurance and the actual things that we have, not some bait and switch or something like that. So talk to me a little bit about if you're coaching a new agent and let's say you got a new agent who has $500 and then you got a new agent who's got $1,500, right? So you have someone who's just kind of trying to find a way to squeeze this in backs against the wall. I need to make this work. And then if you have someone that's got a little bit more wiggle room and can go all in full-time day one, how would you do lead strategy for each of those people? I mean, and, and I think both can work if you if you just put in the work. Um, so whatever you're coming into this business with or whatever you do have, you have to put all of it that you possibly can. If you have a thousand dollars, you don't put in 500, you put in 800, 900, and maybe keep a hundred dollars for gas that week. Like you can make the money so fast in this business. You can't be stingy with your lead purchase. You have to invest everything. You're literally betting on yourself. You want to bet $10, you want to bet $50 on yourself to, to get the higher the return. So um, as far as someone who's coming in with $500, I think that the most important thing is getting as many leads in your hands as possible. And so what I am going to advise to somebody is looking at the three-month-old uh, internet leads and then a mixture of the age final expense and the age mortgage protection that are like a dollar, $2 as well and getting a mixture of those. And you really, with the, with the three month old leads, giving the, the agent the proper expectation that, hey, these leads are three to six to nine months old, but that's actually an advantage to you because no one's actually dialing on them anymore. So when they originally sent in this form, they probably were getting their phone blown off, blown up and probably got really frustrated and didn't make any moves or just decided they were against this. And so now you're calling them up three um you know three months later six months later and giving them the empathy open and what i mean with the empathy open is saying ring ring john hey john i just want to apologize because it looks like a couple months ago you sent in a request for some general life insurance information you probably got your phone blown up you probably blocked a couple different numbers that you didn't like or, or they kept calling you. So I do apologize about that, but I'm one of the managers here at the office and it looks like we never actually got that request back to you. So what I need to do is verify that this information is correct and I'll have you right off the phone. It looks like you're down at 777 Success Lane in a old or current age of 68 years old or their date of birth. And, and giving them that proper expectation of, of using that apologetic approach because what it does is it, in, in that person's mind, like, what is he apologizing for? So now he's listening. And instead of it being, a, oh, this is another robocall, this guy just apologized to me. 
So it's a whole different demeanor as well. Um, and then obviously the age uh, final expense and the age mortgage protection are the same um, approach to just explaining that we're getting back to you about something you probably don't remember doing. Uh, but with the internet leads, I think talking about how you probably got your phone blown up, you probably blocked a couple numbers that want to stop calling you. So I do apologize about that, but I'm one of the managers here. I'm the local guy. And I think that that's a great, you're going to have to work the leads a lot more and make more dials if you are on a tighter budget. So if you, you don't have the money, you have the time. So you got to put the time in to get the money. So then you don't have to spend as much time on the phones because you have enough leads. So whatever position you're in, if you got the time and you don't got the money, then you got to put in the work with the phones resolving the leads. But if you got the, the money, then you need to value your time and do the right things in, in being a top producer and to try to grow an agency at the same time. So that's what mm -hmm. I would do with someone who has $500. Someone who has $1,500, I would recommend a similar approach, but I would also suggest an uh, order of exclusive Facebook leads through Game Time, through Bang Bang, through Happy Asian. So then you get some leads that have their favorite color, their favorite hobby, whatever the circumstance may be, that they have current insurance, how much insurance they're looking for, the beneficiary, just that, those, that lead type right there is so, so like, to the straight point forward with them that I think it's really good to get your hands on some of those. So then you can work those and then work the one month and three month old leads and then work in some of the age mortgage protection. I think the age mortgage protection are the best lead in the CRM to be completely honest with you, Alex. You're talking about a $55, a $60, $70, $80 lead that now cost you $6, $4 or $3 from someone that wasn't able to resolve the lead. And so I think those are truly the best leads you could ever get your hands on. One month old, two month old, three month old, the age of mortgage protection that they just dumped hundreds of thousands of leads in because you guys have to think about this. This is the time where everyone is refinancing their home, getting new homes. And so you're able to potentially catch some people who just had a refinance or who just moved into a new home or sold that home and now they're in a new house. And I learned this the other night with Sam, uh, Sam Chamberlain, she's going up to the leads and door knocking them. And if the person is, a, you know, oh, that person moved away. Oh, no worries. This request is tied to the property. So it looks like you do qualify for this program that takes about 15 minutes. And now you're generating leads that weren't even actually the leads. And I thought that was money. And those are super cheap leads, guys. And so with $1,500, I think that it's, it's really good to diversify with all the different types of leads so you can figure out what you like. Because what I like, Alex, is going to be different than what you like, than, than what's different than what Andy likes, than what uh, different than Jen likes. We all are going to have our own opinion on leads. And so you have to figure out what you like the most. I say I think the age, mortgage protection, the CRM are the best leads. You may think that it's the one month old internet leads. You may think it's a three month old internet leads. You may think it's the age final expense. It's like figure out what you like because we're all different. You know what I mean? But with someone who has more leads, I think diversify more of the lead types. Mm -hmm. And I, I like what you said about setting proper expectations for those aged leads and using empathy in your opening, right? Phone script is the exact same once you start to get to verifying, but that extra five to 10 seconds of empathy of showing I'm human, you're human, I'm empathetic to you before you start diving into the regular phone script, it gets them open-minded, it brings their guard down so they're not as defensive and it allows you to not get hung up on in the first 10 seconds because no one calls and just apologizes right away. Telemarketers don't do that. Telemarketers is, hey, Billy, how you doing? I'm calling you today about, right? Telemarketers, hey, I'm just giving you a call. I apologize. We've been really backed up. I'm sure your phone was just blowing up. And they're like, it catches them by surprise. So I like what you said about that. I like the uh, diversification. Uh, my first year in business, the regret I have is I was too dependent on one lead type. All I worked was Facebook, final expense leads, and new internet leads from EverQuote. That's all I did my whole first year. I was scared of mortgage. I don't know why. There's no reason to be scared of mortgage, but I didn't work a mortgage lead till month 14. And I regret it, right? So learn from Gage, learn from myself, diversify from day one. And I mean, the ROI on those aged leads, if you're not scared of dialing, you're not scared of putting the work, putting in the time, knocking the doors, whatever you got to do, think about it for a thousand dollars right? Let's say we're going off 
an average age lead cost of five bucks. Some are six dollars, some are two, some are three. Let's average it out to five bucks for an aged lead. That's 200 opportunities for a thousand bucks. And you make all that back in one sale. Now, you don't have to be the best salesperson in the world, but I, I bet you even someone who doesn't even have an insurance license could sell one out of 200 and make their money back. So if you're not scared to put in the work, if you're not scared to do the dials, do the door knocks, the ROI on those aged leads is phenomenal. And like you were saying, if your time is super valuable as you're growing an agency and you need to substitute some of the time you're dialing to grow an agency, that's where you spend a little bit extra money on those new leads, like the instant internet, the new internet, or the new mortgage. But that's kind of more as you're growing and advancing. So um, talk to us. Go ahead. No, I was just going to add, man, like, so another approach that Brendan Kitchen says when he's dialing on these age leads is like, John. Hey, John, I'm not a telemarketer, so please don't hang up. That's another easy, like, just be real with these people. You got to get them to understand that you're just not some random person. You're actually getting back to them on the lead. And I think that when you can also automate your lead flow is when you automate deposits. And so when you start to get the capital and when you start getting the ability to um, have more funds, to invest into your business, I think locking out different types of areas as well has contributed to a huge amount of our growth is I decided to get into these different mail programs where I'm locking out different counties to automate my lead flow. And so in return, that automates um, deposits into your account on a weekly basis and it automates you going to work as well. And so that's mm -hmm. something else that I preach to some of my newer guys who have a little bit of capital is like, look, the sooner that you can find a little honey hole, maybe it's not your backyard because there's a lot of FFL agents. So maybe you have to think outside the box and go somewhere three hours away or an hour, two hour fight away. And I think another lead that's underutilized and not really talked about that much is a, a uh, final expense mailer. They're 35 bucks, they're $38 a lead, and they're going to mail to 55 and up individuals. And don't get me wrong, it, it is scary to put your card on a, a you know, automated type lead order, but at the the same time, it automates your budgets as well. And all you need is a little bit of wiggle room. You don't need three, four, five thousand dollars. You need a thousand dollars. I started with a credit card that was two thousand dollars, and I was putting all that in your business. And I think when you're a business owner, you have a business credit card. I mean, I know we're not all in the sit situation or circumstance where we can all have that, but that needs to be a goal of yours. Any business owner in the United States has a business credit card. And if you're in a bad situation where your credit's not the best, there's ways to work on your credit. And, and the way that this business pays, there's ways to get that moving quickly. So I just wanted to touch on that, Alex. I think that's super important. That's also what that really expanded my, my lead flow is when I started getting these different counties and looking in the areas. And what that did is it automated my deposits as well. It, it, takes, it takes you out of the way, you know? Because every single time that you're mentally having to go buy leads manually, that's a choice. Uh, you're choosing to go drop the 500, the 700, the thousand dollars. But when you automate it, it takes you out of the way, out of sight, out of mind. The leads just come in and you're forced to work because you're spending the money. So instead of that one day you had a bad week and you're like, I was going to go buy $800 of leads, but I didn't have a good week. So I'm only going to buy $300 worth. Like That's it. you can't do that because it, it's automated. It's coming, you know? And uh, the cool thing is, is that even if it's not a county, right? Like you said, sometimes the availability is not there. Lead vendors, Facebook lead vendors, they'll do that. I did that with Bang Bang here in Dallas. Yeah, Bang Bang in Dallas. Um, when when I couldn't get the counties out here in Dallas for mortgage, I hit up Bang Bang in Dallas. The the I forget the guy's name, but I reached out to him. His support email was right there, and I said, "Hey, if I got on an automated lead flow with you each week for forty leads a week, can I get a discount?" And I sent that same email to five or six different vendors. Three of them returned my email. And I got it on an automated lead flow of 30 with this Facebook final expense lead vendor and 30 with this Facebook final expense lead vendor at a discount. So I was basically getting 60 leads for the price of 45. And it was automated each, each and every single week. Uh, I was basically getting for 900 bucks, I was getting 60 leads um, with Facebook final expense. And so there's options. Long story short, as you progress through FFL, new agent gets as many leads in your hand as possible. 
What you lack in skill, you got to make up for in time on the phones, the dials, the door knocks. You don't want, just want 20 leads to work. You want 200 leads to work. As you progress, you want to start locking out and get automated with your lead flow, whether it's through Facebook final expense, whether it's through um, locking out counties and always got to be focused on ROI as well, which is why you can't be scared of those. Um, can't be scared of those age leads. So that's good. That's good. Gage, let's talk a little bit about your schedule as an agency manager, all right? Because you consistently sell 30,000 a month. You've mastered the habits and emphasis on the word habits there. Uh, not skills, but habits to get to 30,000 a month consistently, but you're also building an agency. So spend a few minutes kind of just talking to us a little bit about the habits that allow you to do that and what you're doing to grow your team so well right now and how, so you're duplicating yourself amongst your team. Yeah, man. I mean, I just, I think this is a, a, a really big exposure game. The thing that we, we forget about is IMO and we forget what IMO stands for. We, we just think that we're a part of an insurance organization and we forget about the marketing part. And you need to be your biggest marketer. And you guys see me all over the place on purpose, that's intentional. I'm not just doing that because I want to get likes on Facebook because I want validation of what I did. It's because I want you to know who Gage is. And I want other people to know who Gage is. It's because the more value you bring to the marketplace, the more the marketplace will pay you through dividends. And that's just one thing that I really took to heart, Alex, is when Grady told us to be our number one marketer and to be everywhere. Like I, like I, like the fact that that when they told me just a couple of weeks ago that Integrity knew who Nina was before she even got introduced to Integrity through her social media, you know what I thought? I can do that. I, need, I just need to get my name out there. I need to be everywhere. So then Integrity sees me. And then Andrew says that Integrity is in our Facebook group. So why wouldn't I post three, four, five times a day? So I'm not, I'm not confused on that aspect of being an insurance marketing organization. What I'm trying to do is build a brand of enhanced foundation and enhance your life and be an enhancer so people will follow that. People will follow a brand. And so as far as like what my schedule looks like and how we're growing so much, it's I think it's just being consistent with your schedule. And whatever that time is of you getting up, you need to get up at that time every single day. And it shouldn't be seven o'clock, especially on dial day, because dial day starts at eight o'clock and you're not going to be mentally prepared when you wake up at seven o'clock. So, I mean, personally myself, I get up around 6 a.m. and I start my routine of just letting my dog out. I take about 10 minutes to read into a book that I'm diving into um, more self-development and self-education. And there's so many different good books out there that you should be reading. It's not just doing this job. It's also educating yourself as a person and growing personally into a true entrepreneur. Like you're no longer an employee. So you have to take ownership of your business by, by feeding your brain the knowledge that you need to succeed because entrepreneurship isn't for everybody. Entrepreneurship takes a special breed and I'm trying to morph myself into that special breed because I wasn't just born to be an entrepreneur. I'm choosing to be an entrepreneur. So I have to do those different habits and to create good habits. So I think it's starting off waking up in the morning, giving yourself some good um, knowledge as far as if you if you don't like to read there's audio books out there if you don't like audio books go to youtube there's so many youtube videos out there just do something there's so many good people jim brown um there's uh, dave anderson like there's just so many good people that have good content to feed your brain who've already went through it zig ziglar like there's all these good things so um, starting the day off with some type of good habit, good routine, feeding your brain some knowledge, I think is really important. And then, of course, on um, dial days, it's getting to the office early and preparing yourself for being at the office. And I think that's another key key thing that we need to touch on is accountability, Alex. Like, look, you got two choices in this business. You have three, but there should be two. And the three choices are are go to your local office or dial an hour to your and drive to your office or get on live dials. Those are the two choices. But the third choice is to stay at home and dial at home and just do your own thing. And you know the people who choose the option three, which shouldn't even be an option, are the people who are struggling the most. And so accountability is getting to the local office. And when I heard Easton Patton two months ago on our team call say that he drives 90 minutes to his office every single dial day, 
and starts dialing at 7.30 and spends 90 minutes listening to live dials, putting word tracks into his brain, getting, getting the right words and the right tracks to say mentally preparing for dial day is no reason why he's not dominating and he's in the top three in the, in the whole company. So it's like, I mean, you got to train. Like, if you want to be LeBron James, LeBron James doesn't just sleep in until eight o'clock. Like, you have to take this serious and take ownership in your business. So if you're not driving to an office, look, I get it. If you don't want to drive two, three hours, that's your personal choice. So you got to get on FFLDialTeam.com with live dials. There's two choices in this business. If you're not making any of those two choices, you're choosing to lose. And that's okay, but don't be upset and come to Alex or come to your, your manager or come to your vice president and complain when you aren't playing the part. It's like we have an FFL playbook that says, hey, on first down, you gotta go to the, the, the office or you gotta get on live dials. But instead, you're gonna run a, a trick play and, 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 and stay at home and, and dial 300 times, but I dialed 100 times. I fumbled on my words 90 of the times and I didn't get any better because no one was able to coach you. No one was able to listen to you. So taking accountability, I think that's the biggest thing is like now we're starting to get guys going to the local office or getting on the live dials and it's changing their business. Like my guy, Jared Lindsay is on this call tonight and he was a door knocking machine when he first started because he sucked on the phones. I said, dude, door knocking is cool. I was right there with you, but you're going to have to learn how to, to dial on the phones. You should just get on live dials and dial unmuted and he can sit here and contest of the growth that he has experienced in two weeks and he's booking more appointments than ever. He's not having to door knock anymore. And it's because he got on the live dials, guys. Like it's, there's, there's no secret sauce here. And so when you make that third choice, you're really just choosing to lose. And so I think it's the accountability aspect as well, Alex, is that I'm at the office with Rob Richmond every single Monday, Thursday, listening to a gentleman who's been in the insurance industry for 11 years. I would not be, I would be dumb not to take advantage of that. And that's when my business changed, guys, is when I started, when Rob Richmond invited me to his office, I said, I'll be there, man. And I was there every Monday and Thursday. And what it did is it taught me how to dial because I listened to him dial and then it made me dial because it'd be really weird to go to the office and not dial. And yeah. it, it's, it's, it's a, that's a true correlation. I started going to his office last February and then all of a sudden I consistently wrote 30,000 a month wrote yep. 40,000, wrote 50,000. And it's just getting around the people, guys. And so um, as far as my schedule goes, is getting to the office on those Mondays and Thursdays. And now it's a lot of times teaching agents. And when you start teaching agents things is when you start to master your craft. When you're learning, you're learning. But when you teach is when you master the craft. And so I'm willing to always pour into the, the, the guy who just started yesterday or the agent that's been here for two years. And I just know that when I put good energy out into this FFL universe, good energy comes back to me and people have gravitated towards me and I've attracted people through Instagram and through uh, podcasts. And it's, it's just because I've put myself out there for people to know who I am. Um, and then I have the, the, the traditional run days. I'm running on Tuesday. I'm running on Wednesday. And then Thursday, it's the same thing. Get into the office, pour into the agents. I mean, one thing that's really helped us a lot, Alex, is on Monday, on Monday nights, we have a leadership call with people who have aspirations to build a business here. It's a recruiting training call. We call it building for Billy or building with Billy. And it, I've let Billy Tompkins take hold of this. And it's his training call on training. And I had to be humble enough to know that I could learn from Billy because he's been in the industry for five years. I've been in the industry for one and a half years at this time. So it's like, why would we not all listen to this guy? This guy knows he's been around the block. He's hired hundreds of agents. So let this guy take the floor and teach our agents. And so now, man, like, it, it's really cool to see the growth of it because before it was just like me talking and me talking. And I, I realized that like when I talk, and I consistently talk, people get numb to it. But when other people start talking and other people start leaving, you start empowering other people, people will listen. And that call has exploded our agency as far as recruiting goes, because we're listening to somebody who's been in, who's been in the, this experience before. 
And then on Thursdays, we have our own team call like this that yeah. we've been doing all year long and being consistent with it and getting new agents on there. And what we've done recently is I'll host the first call and then I'll allow Michaela to host the next week call. And then the next week, Billy hosts the call. And then the next week, Jared Gonzalez hosts the call. And we're empowering our sales managers to run these calls and to learn how to teach people. <clears throat> and so we're just giving, we're, I'm just not saying I know it all, more or less. All I did right, Alex, is I led from the front. I listened to what people told me to do. I implemented it and it's attracted people into my agency. And now we have a core foundation of really good people that we work with who have the same aspirations as us. And so it's getting really, really fun because now it's multiplication, man, and duplication. And it's just, I think that when you lead from the front, you run your, your 24 to 30 appointments a week, 35 appointments to speed up the learning curve, 40 appointments to become a pro in a month. I mean, Sam uh, Chamberlain said that she, she ran her first 100 appointments in three weeks. It's like mm. she said, they, we told her to run 100 appointments, she would become a professional. So she ran 100 appointments as soon as possible, not saying 15 here, 15 here. She's won 20 to 22 to 25 appointments in two days because she wanted to speed up the learning curve. And that's what's really cool here, guys, is that you have the ability to grow as fast as you want to. The sooner you get obsessed with this thing, the sooner you'll, you'll find success and the sooner you'll, you'll see the bigger picture. Because right now you're just climbing the mountain, the slippery slope, and you fall back down, you get back up and fall back down and get back up. But once you make it to the top where you see the, the, the VPs and the SVPs and you see the bigger picture of what you, can, what you can grow here, that journey and all the scrapes and falls and all that is gonna be well worth it. And you can speed that up. It's all dictated off of your effort and your willingness to learn and be humble and realize that you got to reach out to people. I've been preaching this recently, but like your network at FFL will dictate your net worth at FFL. Like if you only rely on Alexander and you don't reach out to anybody else, you're only going to get Alexander's opinion and Alexander's thoughts. And that's what halted my growth, Alex, is I leaned on Jordan only. I was only calling Jordan. I was only calling Jordan. I was being this private guy. This is my guy. He, he knows me. I don't want to reach out to these people. They don't know me. I don't want them to judge me. They don't want to help me. As soon as I set my pride aside and started reaching out to people and getting people in my corner is when my business exploded. And that would be the same thing for you guys. It's just the more people you talk to, the more people you reach out to, the, the more you're going to learn and the more you're going to take off. And I, I can ramble, man. So I'm sorry for talking too much. Oh, I was literally sitting back and just thinking of how, dude, I'm proud of you, bro. You've, you've, you've grown so much as a leader and you're so passionate about this. And there's no question why your people are winning because that passion is contagious. I mean, I literally, while you were talking, I got two texts from two different people that don't know each other saying, wow, Gage is such a good trainer. So just so you know that. So testament to you, you that was freaking incredible. And hey. dude, the passion really comes out, bro. That's awesome. man, and it, it's just, it's Jordan is what it is, man. Jordan Lowry is the most passionate person that I know and it radiates out of his body. And I'm telling you, the more you become obsessed with this, the more it'll just pour out of your heart. Like, dude, I quit. I, when I first started talking at conferences and, and different events, I would be on the scripted person bullet point by bullet point. And then this past one in the springtime in Dallas, I didn't write anything down. I just spoke from my heart, man. And it's, it's, it's really fun when you live, breathe and sleep FFL, like it pours out of you, man. And it's just a, a direct correlation of Jordan. And I'm just implementing the people that I want to follow. So I love it. I love it. So to wrap up this call, two quick things. Um, one, you gave a perfect segue for another promotion of work spots because you talked about it's one of two things. You're either in an office or you're on a dial team. And there's a lot of new people on this call. So I want to make sure they understand this. And so if you're on a dial team, what that means is that you don't have an office near you. If you do not have an office within 90 minutes of you, then you got to be on a dial team. You're welcome to join ours. It's fffldialteam.com. It's going to ask you for a password. The password is all capital, FFL. 
And that is on Mondays and Thursdays, pretty much all day. So if you don't have an office at the 90 minutes of you, ffl.team.com, password FFL. If you want to be coachable and plug in, like Gage said, you're going to get the results. That's how you do it. If you want to be better than Gage and be too good for the system and I don't need that, uh, whatever, you're not going to have success. Cool. Be our guest. This isn't for you. The second option is get to an office around you. And the way you find the offices is the WorkSpots app. I'm going to kind of show my screen here up close. In the WorkSpots app, it shows every single office in the entire company. And by the end of the year, there's going to be 400 offices within this app. So find out where you are. Search for your state, right? So search, if you're in Texas, search TX for Texas. If you're in California, search CA for California. It'll literally show you every single office in the whole company within the WorkSpots app. And you go literally select the office and you, you, you make sure that you go plug into that office Monday and Thursday for now days. Um, last thing that I want you to do, Gage, is we got 87 people on here. I know you, me, and Jordan Lowry are fired up. We're coachable. We're going to work our butts off this week. So let's pretend there's 84 other people on this call that are on your team that are looking to you for 90 seconds to say, Gage, I need a game plan right now. What should I do right now to make this week successful? 90 seconds, what would you tell them? So right now, there you have 20% off instant Facebook leads. So if you're in a bigger market, there's instant Facebook leads that are the same exact Facebook leads that you would get through Game Time or Happy Agent. So grab all of those that you possibly can. I think grabbing the, the age mortgage protection leads is working out very well for a lot of people. And they're great door knockers because they have their signature on them. So I'm a big fan of any lead that actually has a signature on them with the image that it's printable off and grabbing all the one month and three month old uh, leads that you can. It's not about having 40 leads or 50 leads or 60 leads. It's about having 80, 90, 100 and just putting the numbers in your favor. And my, my two biggest things right now, Alex, is you got to be resourceful. You got to plug into the different resources. Slack is our number one communication channel. And then you have FFLamerica.com that has every resource that you would ever need on there. Anything that you would ever need in this business is on that website. And then plug it into the Facebook group, making yourself be known. Make people know who you are. Make people know your name. Earn your respect by your work and letting your work do the talking. And so <clears throat> be resourceful and practice perfect. What practice perfect means is Right now, if you're struggling on the phones, you should probably go in your bathroom and, and, and run through a phone script with yourself. Practice perfect. Don't just practice. Practice being perfect. Talk If you have a significant other, if you have a dog, if you have a cat, talk to yourself and do a recording. You need to work on your skill sets on the phone. The phones is 80% of this business. So be resourceful and practice perfect. If my dog could talk, she would know the entire script because of the amount of times I've read it to her, just practicing with her over and over again when I was a new agent. I'm just, I'm saying she would know it word for word, probably better than I do at this point. So guys, action steps right this second. We got 87 people on this call right this second. It's 8.55 PM Father's Day, Sunday before a massive dial day. Have a lead strategy ready for tomorrow right now. If you already have your leads because you already bought them, awesome. If you don't, Literally right this second, we're going to hang up this call in 60 seconds, go into the CRM like Gage said, get the aged mortgage, get the aged CRM, get the instant Facebook leads, stock up right now, not tomorrow morning, if you feel like it, right this second. Then make your dial plan for tomorrow. If you're within 90 minutes of an office, set your alarm and go to that office. Tomorrow morning, be dialing by 8 a.m. If you don't have an office within 90 minutes, set your alarm and be a dial team tomorrow at 8 a.m. That's your plan right this second. And then throughout the week, be resourceful, plug into Slack, plug into Facebook. And uh, you guys, his name is Gage Peart. And I've heard him dial before. So it's Peart. It's like heart, but with a P, P-E-A-R-T. That's how he books every appointment. Uh, Adam on Facebook, you guys, he is uh, a shining light in FFL.